before we get going, please do not bother subscribing to our channel. Every time someone subscribes, an umpa lumper tracks me down and kicks me in the shin, and I've had enough. Stop it. This is the story of Redwan Fayid, gangster, author, and serial jailbreaker. Back in 2013, he was at the top of France's most wanted list. Fayid led a criminal gang which carried out armed robberies, jewel theft, and extortion in the Paris area. His dad abandoned the family at a young age and his mother passed away when he was just 19. Around this time, he starts to commit petty crimes with his brothers. In 1990, he fails his final exams at school. And later on that year, he robs his first bank, a crime for which he was never charged. Usually it's filmmakers who are inspired by real life criminals to make their movies. In this case, it's the exact opposite. Fayid gets his inspiration from cinema, especially famous American crime and heist movies. In 1995, he takes the family of a director from the BMP bank hostage and forces him to open the safe. The operation was meticulously planned by Fayid, and the thieves all wore masks of political figures, just like in the Catherine Bigelow movie Point Break, which was released in 91. In 97, he robs a jewelry store dressed and named like the characters from the classic Tarantino movie Reservoir Dogs. In the same year, he attacks his first armored truck in Villepinte, inspired by a scene from the cult Michael Mann movie Heat. The truck is quickly surrounded by Fayid and his men, who threaten the occupants of the truck with guns and place explosives on the windscreen. Fayed brings the men out one by one. He gets away with more than 3 million euros. A few years later, he would write to the director of Heat to express his admiration. Shot in the shoulder during this holdup, Fayed loses a decent amount of blood at the scene and he is identified by his DNA. He spends three years on the run in Israel, where he allegedly trained in the use of explosives with the Israeli Mafia. In September 98, he is arrested on a train in Switzerland for traveling with a fake ID. He tries to make a run for it, but he injures himself and they capture him. This is the first time Fayed would display his Harry Houdini qualities. An officer is driving him to hospital following his arrest, but Fayed manages to steal his gun and escape. Police manage to trace his route back to Paris using the train ticket he bought in a travel agency there. And they managed to arrest him again coming out of that agency. And he is condemned to 18 years in prison for armed robbery. On the 30th of March, 2009, he is released on good behavior. While in prison, he started writing. In 2010, he publishes a book called Braqueur, in which he talks about growing up in a life of crime in the Paris suburbs. He makes several TV appearances to promote the book, claiming his demons are dead and he's left behind his criminal life. Je me suis arrêté, hein. Je n'ai pas envie de dire Dieu merci, mais presque. Et puis bon, bah, ça m'a servi un petit peu à stopper tout ça, à arrêter tout ça, à réfléchir. Et puis. Euh, et c'est une page qui est définitivement tournée aujourd'hui. Ça, ah, vous pouvez euh, le jurer, vous ne retomberez jamais. Ah, bah, en tout cas, ce que je sais, c'est que mes démons euh, ne sont pas endormis, ouais. mais sont complètement morts. Ouais. Police don't believe him and are convinced he will soon be back to his old ways, and they don't have to wait long to be proven right. Faïd and his crew carry out an attack on an armored truck convoy. As the assault is in full swing, police quickly arrive on the scene. In the ensuing gun battle, Aurélie Fouquet, a 26-year-old police officer, is shot and killed. He is arrested a year later and thrown back in jail. Following a visit from his brother, Fayed uses weapons smuggled into the prison to carry out an audacious escape. While holding four prison wardens hostage with a handgun, he sets explosives to blast through five prison doors standing between him and the exit, where he is met by a getaway car. He then sets fire to the car in Lille and flees in a second vehicle. While being excellent at escaping, he is equally bad at staying under the radar. He's arrested again on the 29th of May, 2013, in a hotel in saint imman Interpol confirmed that he was trying to obtain false documents in order to travel to Israel. This time he is placed in solitary confinement. His trial begins over the botched assault on the armored truck, resulting in the death of Aurélie Fouquet. And on the 13th of April, he is sentenced to 18 years. His brother is also sentenced to 20 years for his part in the robbery, and crucially for having fired the shot which killed the police officer. Faïd's sentence is extended the following year thanks to his prison break, and further again when found guilty of a previous truck robbery. In early 2018, officers spot drones flying over the whole prison. At the time, they think nothing of it. Three associates of Fayed head to an airfield close to the prison, posing as flight school students. They hold a flight instructor at gunpoint and hijack a helicopter. I think you know what's coming next. Under duress, 
the instructor flies the helicopter to the prison and it lands in the courtyard. At this very moment, Fayed is in the prayer room. Men armed with Kalashnikovs exit the helicopter. They take out the security cameras with smoke grenades and use a cutter grinder to cut through the prison wall directly into the prayer room. Patiently waiting, Fayed follows the men back to the helicopter and climbs aboard. He is gone before prison officers know what time it is. This time it took him less than seven minutes to escape. The helicopter later found nearby Charles de Gaulle airport, where it is believed they fled by car, leaving the flight instructor unharmed. Fayed hides in a small apartment in Cray, where he grew up, and he only goes out at night for short walks, disguised in a burqa covering him from head to toe. In October, three months after his escape, police raid the flat in the middle of the night and they pick him up again. Following his double escape, French authorities could ill afford any further embarrassments, so his prison detention takes place under the most strict conditions. You can't blame them, really. In February 2020, Fayed begins a hunger strike to denounce his treatment. As his trial approaches, planned to begin on February the 27th, security measures at the Palais de Justice in Saint-Omer are reinforced. Airport-style bag scanners are installed, and the courtroom is modified to restrict access. A security perimeter is put in place around the courthouse. The whole trial actually ends up taking place without Fayed, as he refuses to leave his cell. On the 13th of March 2020, he is sentenced to 28 years. Psychiatrists would describe Fayed as a social predator, someone who would use his charm and intelligence to control others in order to get what he wants. He was certainly no psychopath. He would be constantly seeking the next adrenaline rush. For someone with such intelligence, he didn't do a great job avoiding capture, often being picked up close to where he was known or where he lived in his youth. Fayed is 50 this year. He once said, when you enter into this game, there are only two outcomes, death or prison. He based his criminal career on movies, a fascination which led to him carrying out some of the most bold and spectacular crimes and escapes in French history. However, unlike the movies, in real life, people can get hurt and Orly Fouquet paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. This video is dedicated to her family and her memory. Subscribe if you want to see more Crime Dog cases and see me suffer at the hands of those pesky Oompa Loompas. If you just joined us at the end of this video, that will make no sense, so I suggest you go back to the beginning. Until next time, stay safe, merci beaucoup et au revoir.